Coming up, World Earth Day, an exclusive reading from Cookie Book 2, all about saving the environment and how to make these super cool terrariums. Hello, today's video is all in honour of World Earth Day, which is every April the 22nd. It happens in 190 different countries and over a billion people take part. And it all started back in 1970, which was when the tide turned and there became a bit of a shift in people's thinking about factory processes and pollution and driving around in cars that use lots of petrol and flying in planes. Before that point, people had seen these things as a mark of success. But then slowly people began to become aware of the fact that there are consequences of factory processes and using fossil fuels and plastic. Eight million pieces of plastic find their way into the sea every day. And this plastic cannot be disposed of and it's polluting our planet. Our carbon footprint with all the petrol and all the factory emissions and fossil fuels being burnt is absolutely detrimental. It's causing a hole in the ozone layer, which is leading to global warming. It means that our polar ice caps are melting and sea levels are rising. We're all so much more aware of this stuff than we used to be. Just wanted to also point out, look at this amazing greenery I'm surrounded by. You cannot beat greenery for mental well-being and for beauty. It's so naturally amazing and we need it because it generates the oxygen that we breathe. You know, 20% of the oxygen is generated by the Amazon rainforest, which is under threat. All greenery is under threat if we're going to continue to build over it. And we really, really need to take a check on our actions. World Earth Day helps us to uh, celebrate the fact that our Earth is still functioning at the moment. But if we don't change our ways, it might not always stay that way. Um, in honour of World Earth Day, I thought it might be nice to read an extract from the new cookie book, which is out this August. It's all to do with climate destruction and being environmentally aware. So here's a bit of chapter one. Chapter one, a spanner in the works. Ugh, typical. Something always has to go wrong, doesn't it? And everything had been going so well since the beginning of the school year and the whole Jake thing. I mean, not getting on with Jake just seems like a blip now. It's weird to think how much I hated Jake at the beginning of the school term. Crazy weird. It's like that Jake was a different person from this Jake. It's so easy to judge a book by its cover. Now I've got to know him properly, he's great and nothing like I thought back in those days. Me and Jake are like a little gang now. Hard to believe because I've never been in a gang before and also because I never thought anyone could come between me and Keziah. We've practically been joined at the hip for the last two years. Before Kaziah, I'd always been a bit of a loner. Mum says that even when I was little at playgroup, all the other kids loved taking part in the group activities, singing nursery rhymes, doing all the actions and joining in with story time, whereas I'd always be doing my own thing at the back of the class. That's harder to do these days at school, considering I sit right near the front. Actually, school is quite good at the moment. Our head teacher, Mrs. D'Souza, is into science in a big way. So she's got us all interested in climate change and saving the planet, which personally I am all for because it's where I live. I watched this documentary the other day and it showed how harmful plastics can be. Get this, every day, approximately 8 million pieces of plastic pollution find their way into the sea. 8 million! That's more plastic in the sea than there are people in Scotland unbelievable. So since then I've been making the whole family ditch single-use plastic, start recycling and generally be more environmentally friendly. Kazire and Jake are both down with the whole eco-friendly thing too. Can you believe that a one and a half degree rise into average temperature will have an irreversible effect on our planet? Loads of different species would be wiped out. And it would be no good for us humans either. The sea levels would rise, land would be lost and millions of people would be made homeless. All because of one and a half degrees. How crazy. It sounds like nothing. We try to be eco-friendly in everything we do now. Kazaya even cycled to mine today. Since she got her new bike, her dad's let her cycle over on her own at weekends, which is so good. It's like being an independent grown-up. We can practically spend all of Saturday and Sunday together. Bliss. 
Thank goodness bikes don't have carbon emissions like cars do. Ruby, my middle sister, has a friend whose dad owns an electric car, which is also really good, as it doesn't use any petrol and just runs on electricity instead. You plug it into charge as though it's a mobile phone or tablet. How funny is that? Ruby says it glides along without making any noise and often people don't hear it coming. In the future, all cars will be electric. They'll have to start making a special noise or there'll be lots of squashed cats on the road. Anyhow, me and Kazaya are sitting in the garden discussing what I should do for my upcoming birthday when who should jump over the fence but Bluey, the cat I share with Jake. She's probably getting out of the way of the lawnmower. We can hear Jake cutting the grass next door. His parents pay him to do it and at quite a good rate too. He gets £10 for the back lawn and £5 for the front, which is way smaller. If you were going on price per area, he gets a much better deal on the front lawn as it's probably a tenth of the size of the back. My parents don't pay me to do anything. I'm just expected to do it all for free. Slave labour, if you ask me. After Jake has finished, we all end up sitting in his back garden making friendship chains with the freshly cut buttercups and daisies. Did you know daisies and buttercups are actually weeds, Kaziah pipes up. My gran reckons a weed is just a plant in the wrong place, says Jake. It's only a weed if you don't want it where it is. I've never thought of it like that, but I guess if a rare orchid grew in the middle of a football pitch, then in a way it would be a weed, because you'd pull it out. You wouldn't want it there, disrupting the grain. My gran says you can tell if people like butter by holding a buttercup under their chin and seeing if it shines yellow, adds Kaziah. She tries it out on all of us, confirming we all like butter. I can't really add anything to the what our grannies say about buttercups and weeds conversation, as my nanny lives in Bangladesh, and buttercups and daisies don't even grow there. At least I don't think they do. Plus, she doesn't speak any English or even have Skype. My mum gets long letters from her every now and then, but I have no idea of her views on daisies and buttercups, or what is and isn't a weed for that matter. I could always add my own views to this conversation though. The buttercup test is rubbish, I declare. They stare at me, so I have to back it up. It makes it seem like everyone likes butter, but surely not everyone in the whole world can, I continue. What about people with a dairy intolerance? I did actually once Google why buttercups are so shiny. I pretty much Google everything these days, a habit I've got from Ruby, who often says man's best friend is Google. Buttercups are so shiny because they're trying to attract insects from a huge distance to pollinate them, I explained to Jake and Kaziah. After I say it, I instantly realise how square I sound. It's like I just swallowed a textbook. Luckily, it seems to impress Kaziah and even Jake, who remarks, with knowledge like that, you should go on popular TV quiz show Brain Busters. We all laugh. It's starting to get dark outside and Kaziah suggests we go in. Kaziah has been scared of the dark ever since I can remember. She still sleeps with a night light on, whereas I need pitch black darkness to sleep. The first time I stayed over at Kaziah's, I couldn't sleep all night because of her annoying night light. I can remember watching her Winnie the Pooh alarm clock and counting down the hours till morning. I've got used to sleeping at hers since then. Nah, let's stay out longer, says Jake. You've got to conquer your fears face on. Bet you wouldn't think that if you were scared of something, I say. Nothing scares me, replies Jake defiantly. Everyone's scared of something, says Kaziah. Please, can we go in now? After some protesting by Jake that his room is too messy for visitors and that the beautiful outdoors should be appreciated at night, he finally relents and we go inside. We sneak past his mum, who's watching a crime drama, and head up to his bedroom. Jake's mum can talk for England, and because she's never met Kaziah before, if we had bumped into her, it would have been a good two hours before we got away. As we head to Jake's room, I notice a load of half-packed suitcases in his parents' bedroom. Kaziah asks him if they're going away, and Jake tells us that his dad is taking his little brother on a trip to Disneyland as a treat for his birthday. Jake's family is so cool. We never do stuff like that in our family. I can't imagine getting a trip to Disneyland as a birthday present. That would be off the scale. 
Jake's bedroom is really fun to hang out in. It's kind of cosy with dark walls plastered with posters over every square centimetre and a thickly carpeted floor. There's loads of gadgets and gizmos too. Jake is currently into Aliana Tiny. He has all her music and can do all the dance moves from all her videos. Jake is a really good dancer. Me and Kaziah are both rubbish. Unlike most kids our age, we're not really into Aliana Tiny. She's playing at Wembley Stadium soon and all the tickets sold out in the first hour. They're pretty much like gold dust. Knowing Jake's parents, they've probably already got him a pet as a surprise. We plonk ourselves down on Jake's bed. Jake has a double bed which is pure luxury. He reckons it's because he has to give up his room if his relatives come to stay, but that's probably only once a year, if that. So he really is getting a good deal. No one else in our class has their own double bed, not even Susie Ashby. A double bed wouldn't even fit in my room. Kaziah looks around. Wow, you have so much stuff, she says. All this plastic can't be good for the environment. But it's not single use like a carrier bag or drinking straw, Jake protests. None of this is going in the bin any time soon. True, smiles Kaziah. But I've never seen so much stuff, though. Your room is like Aladdin's cave. Just birthday presents and bits and pieces I've built up over the years, he replies. That reminds me. I have to decide what I'm doing for my birthday, which is coming up soon. I never usually do anything, but this one's the big one -o. I'll be an entire decade old, a tenth of a century, double figures. We all decide that we'll get thinking of a good way to celebrate. When is it exactly? Jake asks. Two Saturdays time, I reply. That's when Susie Ashby's birthday is, says Jake. She's inviting everyone in the class, apparently. I heard her telling Alison Denby. She reckons she's even getting a party planner. Keziah bursts out laughing. What? That's a bit grand, isn't it? Where's she holding it? The Ritz? Great. Susie Ashby is having a party with the whole class at the Ritz on my birthday. How can I compete with that? I'll have to think of something fast. So there you have it, a sneak preview of the second cookie book. Now today, because we're on the theme of the earth and the planet and saving our environment, I thought it might be fun to make mini terrariums. What is a terrarium, you ask? Well, this is a terrarium and it's like a garden in a jar, an indoor garden. And the good thing about them is that you don't need to really water them much because they're kind of like their own little ecosystem in there. And so if you're no good at looking after plants, a terrarium could be the thing for you. And uh, they're really easy and simple to make. So first of all, to make a terrarium, you need to find a jar. I found a load of different jars here. These sort of storage jars are good, but no good if your mum is storing something in them already. Um, jars that you just get food in are great. Or these jars with the big stoppers on the top look lovely as well. But once again, they're storage jars. You could just use an old jam jar. And if you can't get the label off, then um, you could always use the back as sort of the front. And then you could even make a sticker to stick over the label uh, that says my very own terrarium or something like that. Um, but in general, the labels will come off jam jars if you give them a good old scrub um, with soap and water under a tap. Once you've got the label off your jar, you're ready to begin. Now I've got this lovely big jar here, um, which will be really great. Um, I found it, um, it's a bit old and smelly, but I thought it's perfect. And so what you need to do first is you need to put some stones in the bottom of your jar which is what I'm doing here. There we go. And that's so that you've got good drainage. So next, you need to put your soil in. Now, if you're using a plant that already comes potted, um, you could use the soil that it's already in. The best way to make a terrarium, I always think, is so that the soil... Um, goes to under halfway and then the top of the plant comes to sort of over halfway. You want to have a bit of space at the top. I think that looks best personally, but it's totally up to you. As you can see, this is 
quite messy. You might be better off doing this outside so that your parents don't go mad. You've ruined their table with soil. Right, there we go. And now, definitely do this outside. I'm gonna have to dustpan and brush this up. Wait one moment. So I've managed to clean up my surface and you'll see that you can see the layers of like the stones and then the layer of the soil. It's good to try and keep your layers as flat as possible, but it really doesn't matter if they're not flat at all. And then next you need to get the plants that you're planting. Now for terrariums, it's really good because they're going to be indoors and you're not really going to water them that much. They're going to be littered off with their own little ecosystem going on, which means that, you know, the water will be in a closed system, essentially. So it won't lose moisture like a pot plant that has no lid on it. Um, I always think it's good to do plants that don't die easily. You want small plants that you can fit in your jar. Now, I know cactuses and succulents, which have got those chunky leaves, often come in terrariums. They keep moisture in their leaves. Um, you'll need potting soil if you're planting those. Um, I um, have got, and they, they can be planted together because they need sort of this different amount of water from other stuff. I have found some plants that were growing in a pot that I had uh, in the garden. And one's a fern, and one is, I don't even know what it is, it's sort of purpley looking. So I'm going to put these in now. The important thing is that you want the roots to all go in. That's the important thing, because we don't want to be losing any plant, and it needs its roots to grow. So in we go, put it in, and then... A really good finishing touch is to add in, you'll see that the terrarium often has like moss and rocks uh, at the front. So if you're getting moss, you need to make sure that it's there with all its roots and little colourful rocks are nice. I'm putting in a little man there um, that I made out of a cork, literally just a painted cork with a little face drawn on. And then, so that is a little bit of slate that I found. Slate always looks nice. So I'm going to pop that in and then a big pebble at the front. There we go. And that just helps jazz it up a bit. There we are. And uh, can you see? I'll just give you a bit of shade. There we go. You can see my terrarium. Now because this is slate, I'm going to get a bit of chalk and write my indoor garden on it as a really cute finishing touch. There we go, my indoor garden. And there, I put it in the soil. That, obviously, if you've got a big jar, you can use a jam jar or a smaller jar. You just need to make sure that you use really small plants. So I'm going to just use a regular jam jar this time. And it's the same process that we use once again. So stones go in the bottom. Now, this one is just a little weed that I found growing. And the thing is, so you want plants that will grow easily. This weed literally just started growing in a pot that was left outside. There we go. So I'm sticking in with its roots and everything. And basically, anything that's green that will grow easily is good. My top tip, is, there we are, it's in there and it's looking happy. My top tip is ivy, because ivy grows really easily. Now this one's got ivy in, and the way to get ivy to grow is to get a cutting of some ivy, and then you can put your cutting in a bit of water till roots grow out of the bottom. You might need to get a grown up to help you. Once the roots come, out then you are ready to plant it in your little garden and then water it and it should grow really nicely because ivy is very low maintenance that is good now all terrariums i think look best if the space above is quite a good length of space so you've just got air for quite a bit of space but these ones as you can see i've put quite a big length of soil and stone and a really 
a good way to add a bit of colour, I always think, is by putting a funky, jazzy ribbon around them. So there we go. There we have a funky terrarium with a lovely pink ribbon around it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And instead of doing a bow, this time I'm just going to put a ribbon around it and then tape it on at the back. Very final last touch is to make a little label like this. Just put it in there, I don't want to obstruct the plant or the ribbon. And there you have your little terrariums and you can keep them wherever you want in the house and they look really cool. They really do look cool. Happy World Earth Day. Please subscribe and spread the word. Bye.